Okay, I've already recorded a long in-depth tutorial on using the residual styling detection diagnostics tool, which walks you through the process slowly and explains every step in detail. This video is going to be much faster and show you how you can quickly use this tool to identify and resolve residual styling from your theme. So a quick recap, residual styling is when the CSS from your theme is written in a way that it affects the menu and breaks its functionality. In the most common scenario, this CSS is based on a class or ID from a container in your theme. So the simplest way to resolve residual styling is to move the menu outside of that theme container within the theme templates, thereby bypassing the interfering code altogether. That's what this tool helps you to identify and resolve. So let's jump right into an example. Okay, so here's an example of the menu working the way it should. This is the Ubermenu demo site. And on this site, I have a theme that causes residual styling. We have the same exact menu here, but if you look at it, you'll see that it is completely broken in the submenu. Obviously, this is not how the menu is supposed to function. The theme CSS is completely interfering with the functionality of the menu and just completely breaking everything. So, we're going to be making use of this new diagnostics tool to determine where the source of the issue is in the theme and then figure out where we go to fix that code. So the first thing we're going to do is going to go to the Uber menu control panel. We are going to go into the uh, main configuration tab under integration and enable direct injection testing. What this is going to do is add an extra copy of the menu to our site which will not be affected by the residual styling from the theme that we can compare it to as a control case so that we know what the menu is supposed to look like. So after enabling uh, direct injection, we'll then need to assign it a menu, assign it the same menu that we're working with, so that we're comparing apples to apples. You'll see that this is the direct injection copy of the menu right at the top of the site, and you'll see that uh, this menu is working properly. There's no interference from the theme because this menu is right inside the body tag, as opposed to this menu being inside a nav wrapper tag from the theme, and that's what's causing the residual styling. So you can compare these two menus. Obviously, they are not currently the same. So what we're going to do is run the diagnostics tool, come over and run the residual styling detection and manual integration tool inside of that. It'll highlight the two menus, and it give you an overview of what residual styling is all about. Next, we're going to activate direct injection. We've already done that, so we didn't have to restart the tool twice. Next, it's time to start unwrapping the menu so we can determine what container is the source of the issue. So uh, it has detected that there are multiple Uber menus on the site. Uh, that's obviously because we enabled direct injection, so we have an extra copy. And it's just asking us to click on which menu uh, we want to be working with to actually detect uh, the problem with. So uh, we click on the green border of this menu, and now we're selected. We're working with this menu. And now all we do is we just click this remove container button and each time we do that it's going to remove the parent element from the menu. And once we click remove container we'll then compare the menu and see if the residual styling has been resolved. If not we'll do it again until we find the container that's causing the issue. Once we find the container that's causing the issue we click on the green button and that'll bring us to the next step where we can figure out where in the theme uh, that container is so that we can replace it with the appropriate code. So, uh, reminder, we have a bunch of residual styling from the theme. Submenu is not working properly at all, so we're going to click Remove Container. You can see that it removed this container that was wrapping the menu, and now if we check it, it is working great. So, there's the submenu. Uh, you can see it's working properly now. It's looking just like uh, the control submenu. And uh, so now we know that we've resolved, or we've found the source of the residual styling. So we're going to click on the green button, click once residual styling is removed. And this next screen shows us uh, that this is basically the code that you're going to find in the theme. There's a wrapper with WP nav menu called inside it. And what we need to do is replace this entire thing with Uber menu. This is an example of what the code might look like. Uh, this is not the exact code, so don't just copy and paste it. Uh, once you find this code in the theme, you're going to replace it conditionally by saying if Uber menu exists, then print Uber menu. Otherwise, print the theme menu. All right. So 
At this point, we need to actually find where in the theme files this code exists so that we can replace it properly. So we're going to click the Search Theme Files for Menu button. What this does is it's going to search through your active theme as well as any child theme if you have one active, and it's going to look for uh, the ID or class that it found uh, of the wrapper, and uh, barring that, it's going to uh, search for WP Nav menu as well, so it'll show you any place in the theme that menus are being printed. And at the top, we get a little reminder, this is what we're looking for effectively inside the theme. So you'll see that, uh, remember the ID is site navigation. So the first thing it searched for was site navigation and it found that inside the iconic one header.php. This is the theme we're currently using. You can see that on line 81, we found this. It happens to be exactly the same as what we were looking for in this case. That means that there wasn't any PHP being, being executed to create this line. It's just a straight HTML line from the theme template file and you'll see that that ends here so this will be the segment we're replacing you can also see that uh, in functions.php it located two uses of WP nav menu uh, but these are just in comments they're just referencing it they're not actually making use of the function and uh, the other place it found it was in header.php and this of course makes sense it's on line 83 which is between 81 and 84 uh, so this is clearly the spot we're looking for so this explains what to do next. We're looking for this, we're going to replace it with this skeleton, and uh, this is an example of the code we might replace. So what we're going to do now is switch over to our code editor, and we're going to locate the iconic one header.php file, line 81. So let's move over here. We'll go to our themes, iconic one. Obviously, I have way more themes than you will because I'm testing a lot of them and we open the header.php file and then we go to line 81. Here's line 81 and you can see that this is how the theme defines its menu. This is the wrapper that we've been looking for and when the menu is inside this wrapper the theme styles impact the menu and break it. So what we want to do is put the menu outside of this theme wrapper. Now we could just delete this, but if we did that, then you'd end up with an error if you disable Uber menu. So what we're going to do is conditionally replace it if the Uber menu plugin is installed. So back here, it gives you some skeleton code to work with. So I will copy and paste that here. And you can see that you basically just replace these two segments with the appropriate code. So in the else statement, the theme code goes there. So I'm going to move this code into the else statement. So that's saying if Uber menu isn't active, we'll use the theme menu. Now in the if statement, we're going to put the Uber menu manual integration code and you can generate that in the Uber menu control panel. So if we go to our Uber menu settings, under integration, manual integration, we will choose the theme location that we want to integrate. In this case, it's our primary menu, and that will generate the code we need right here. We'll take this and copy it, bring it back to our theme template, paste it there, and now we have the logic that says if Uber menu exists, show Uber menu. Otherwise, show the theme menu including that wrapper, but it won't wrap Uber menu anymore. Now, as a caveat, you should be making this edit in a child theme. I've made it in, a, in the parent theme here just for demonstration purposes to keep things simple. You want to create a child theme and then copy the header.php into the child theme and make the edit there. This way it preserves it next time you update the parent theme. There are lots of tutorials online as to how to make a child theme. There are plugins that can help you generate a child theme automatically. And uh, I've also have another tutorial uh, that describes the manual integration process in detail where I go through creating a simple child theme that way. So we're not gonna cover that here. It's the same process. You're just doing it in a child theme header.php instead of the parent header.php. So now that we have this code present, we'll go back and, and uh, load up our home page again. Now here's Uber menu, and you'll see no more residual styling. It's no longer wrapped in that container from the theme that was the source of the residual styling. 
So the theme CSS no longer applies, and now Ubermenu can function as intended without any interference from the theme. The last thing we want to do is we don't want this direct injection menu anymore, so we're going to go back to the settings, uncheck direct injection testing, save that, come back to the home page, and now we're going to have our single menu without any interference from the theme working great. So that's all there is to it. That tool helps you identify the proper container and then locate it in the theme so you can replace it with the manual integration code so that you no longer have residual styling interference from the theme. If you found this tutorial way too fast, I have two other in-depth tutorials on how to use this, walking you through every step. It goes much more slowly and explains everything in detail. This tutorial is intended for people who are finding that too slow, but if this is too fast, don't worry about it. Just go watch those other tutorials and you'll get it from there. All right, hope this tool helps you out.